Hey everyone, John here. So, uh, earlier today I finished watching Raven's Home Season 1. So I figured, uh, you know, I might as well give my full thoughts on the season, because why not, right? Okay, so, if you saw my last vlog on the on Raven's Home, that was the vlog of the episode Dancing Tween, you'll know that I said that at, for the first, like, three episodes of the show, uh, I wasn't really liking it. I, thought, I found it to be pretty mediocre, not really very funny, kind of just a weak kind of a new series on Disney Channel, but I did have some hopes that it would be get better. I was in the minority about uh, not liking the show at the time, but, you know, I did have some hopes that it would get better, and it did start to get better when we got to the fourth episode that was called The Bearer of Dad News, which I would still probably say was the best episode of this season so far. That was um, a pretty solid episode, dealing with some interesting themes, with um, Nia and Booker, that's Raven's kids, and kind of some interesting conflicts they had with their dad, and, you know, their parents are divorced, Raven and her ex-husband. So, you know, it was a pretty funny episode and dealt some kind of interesting themes, got a little more dramatic, so that was pretty good. Uh, not that the first three episodes didn't have anything good to them, but overall they were just kind of meh to me. Um, but every, uh, for a while after that, the episodes were, you know, some pretty solid episodes, you know, like the episode Dancing Tween I saw, I talked about. Uh, I don't know if I would call that many of them flat out good, per se, but they were getting decent for a while. They were solid, you know. Yeah, you know, we had, you know, some nice jokes, and the show could do some some sweet, touching moments pretty well, too. The characters I started to enjoy more, particularly Nia, who's probably my favorite character. I mentioned that before. And also Tess is a very funny character, too. That's their kind of annoying neighbor character who's always kind of showing up and living there. Although they actually seem to like her, and she's, like, genuinely friends with, you know, one of their family members, Nia. You know, I mean, I was never exactly, like, a huge fan of That's So Raven. I watched it on, like, ABC's One Saturday Morning when I was younger, and I enjoyed it. You know, I always thought it was pretty funny when she would dress up in all those costumes and stuff. Um, uh, and it, it could do some sweet moments, too. I remember I was going back and watching a few episodes before this show premiered, and yeah, it could definitely be an enjoyable show, but I think I enjoyed stuff like The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody more, although that one doesn't hold up extremely well either, to be honest, but you know, they're, they're fine shows, both of them, really. Um, now, the thing about it is that, yeah, um, this show maybe is like a similar quality, although that show, um, the original show, could do some great stuff, like the episode True Colors, the one about racism, uh, that was, I actually watched that recently, that was a really good episode, I was like surprised how well they handled that issue in kind of a very realistic way, while mixing the comedy and the serious issues as well. But, um, this show, now, like I said, um, for a while we were getting some consistently good episodes, I thought we started to get some that were a little weaker towards the end of the season, we only had 13 episodes, I think Andy Mack got the same thing, it's first season, only 13 episodes. Um, the first episode that kind of got a little back into the weaker stuff, I think, was the episode, it was the 10th episode called Fears of a Clown. Um, they had that episode, and they also had an episode called, did I say Tears? I meant Fears of a Clown, about, um, you know, Raven having a fear of clowns. And there was another one that aired the following week called The Baxter-cism of Levi Grayson. Uh, these were both kind of Halloween episodes. I mean, one was kind of just about, like, fear and horror, even though apparently Fears of a Clown aired September 29th, at least according to Wikipedia here. I don't know how accurate that is. And the next one aired in October, and that one actually took place in Halloween. Um, maybe I need to watch them again, but both of these kind of got a little back into the meh category. Not necessarily anything extremely wrong with them, per se, but just a little bit didn't really do much for me, I guess you could say. Um, yeah, I was a little behind those episodes for a while. That's why I just got around to finishing the show now, even though it's been done for a couple weeks now. Um, next we got the 12th episode, which was called Dream Moms. Um, that one was, that one was kind of okay. Um, you know, actually, Wikipedia is weird, and I, I can't tell which is the, you know, it's saying something different than the order, I don't know. There were, there were last two episodes, I don't know which one aired first. There was Dream Moms and Best in Show. These ones were kind of okay, and they had one about Raven having some issues with her job, and Booker trying to help out. That was Vest in Show. 
Uh, yeah, it does confirm here on Wikipedia that, yes, uh, Neo was not in that episode, which I thought was kind of strange that she just wasn't in it, but whatever. I don't know, maybe the actress who played her was busy or something, I don't know. Um, um, but she did appear in the other episode, Dreams Mom. Dream Moms, that was the one I watched this morning. That one was an okay, solid episode. It had a few moments that, uh, definitely made me laugh pretty hard. That one was basically about... Uh, Booker and Levi trying to do something nice for their mom, show they appreciate them, uh, getting them tickets to a concert, which is kind of a nice little story about uh, appreciating those, you know, who do things for you. Not as good as, I don't know, Girl Meets the Forgotten from Girl Meets World, of course, but pretty solid nonetheless. So yeah, uh, I guess I don't have a ton left to say. Overall, I would say it was an okay season, and it's definitely... Um... It, it's a show I'll be watching again when season two comes around. I'm hoping that it will continue to be a, at least an okay show, maybe get a little better. I guess this is kind of taking on the role of, like, Liv and Maddie being, like, an okay comedy, you know, sitcom on Disney Channel with some drama that can do some good stuff sometimes, where I guess Andy Mack is more the girl meets world, a more dramatic show that's, you know, better overall. But yeah, I'll, I'll probably just keep watching it just because, you know, why not... I don't know, I have a little bit of a nostalgic connection to it, and, you know, who knows, I might review some more stuff in the future. Maybe they'll make some great episodes that I'll talk about, or some bad episodes I'll talk about. I don't know, but, yeah, I just wanted to do some thoughts on this, and, uh, yeah, I'll try to get that Nez Declassified review out by the end of the month. Yes, it is going to be Nez Declassified. Actually, nobody voted for Adam Jimmy's Head. So, yeah, Nez Declassified it is, I guess. Maybe people don't want me to review Adam Jimmy's Head, I don't know. But yeah, I'll be doing a positive review on this classified episode. Still not sure which one. The episodes are kind of hard to get, but I'll figure it out. Yeah, okay, so that's all I got to say, and uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.